action. Hi, I'm Bill, and you're watching the Astro Vagabond channel. In this video, I'm going to give you an update on where I'm at with my Edge HD 8. As if you're following the channel, you know I received it a few months ago, and then the parts started to come in, and now I've got everything I need. I'd been putting off a little bit trying to get it dialed in, but I said I, I really got to uh, get uh, going on that. So I'm going to give you an update on where I'm at at that. But before I do, if you've not seen our Astro Chat series, uh, Patrick Kerrigan and I, Patrick, you can find him on uh, the Astro Vagabond and Friends um, Facebook group. Uh, we've started this concept called Astro Chats where we're trying to bring content focused for uh, beginners and maybe intermediate imagers. Um, and um, we've got a, three chats up there already. The recent one with uh, Simon Lewis from ZWO was very good. Um, I've got a response from Charles Bracken. He writes the Deep Sky uh, Imaging Primer. Uh, he's a uh, we're going to work to get him scheduled. Also, um, Andy Weeks, I think, is going to be uh, scheduled here soon. I think we're going to try and record with him uh, this coming week. Uh, we're Sunday right now and uh, the 27th of uh, November. And then uh, Lee Poulin uh, reached out to me through Stargazer's Lounge, and he's going to help bring the perspective of a UK imager and some of the challenges that they face with weather and those type of things. So we're uh, keep an eye out for that one. So if you've not seen the series yet, uh, you might want to hit the subscription and then notification bell. And we're going to continue to try to do these weekly with a release on Friday mornings. And again, it's about content uh, geared towards beginners, first year, second year imagers. So uh, keep an eye out for that. All right, so last night I finally got out here, opened the can of worms that I knew I had to open sooner or later, trying to get the Edge HD uh, 8 uh, dialed in. Um, back focus uh, definitely is one. Collimation is another. And then understanding where tilt may be in my system. And in the advent of the newer technology cameras where you have uh, larger sensors, smaller pixels, there is a possibility for tilt uh, with your image sensor. But more so than that, if you look at my image train here with a, uh, point, a Celestron 0.7x reducer, and then I've got some spacers in here and everything, I've got the filter wheel, um, how those parts are machined and how those parts are put together could also introduce tilt into your system. So, you know, why I say open a can of worms is I, I knew I had to address this sooner or later and uh, so the time is now for me to do it. Now I had some good luck last night and I'm also going to attach a uh, link in the uh, video description that has a very good discussion that happened on cloudy nights uh, around uh, uh, tilt and, and those type of things. So. Do you uh, try to address your tilt before you address your back focus and, and where, you know, so there's all these different, several different ideas on how to approach it. Here's how I did it. Um, I decided to work on back focus by changing primarily, there's a spacer here between my Celestron OAG and my ZWO filter wheel. And I tried a spacer in here of different sizes. I was trying to get around 105 millimeter of back focus. Now, from what I've read, it's going to vary a little bit. Uh, filters also have to be taken into consideration. Uh, so there's several different factors. So I decided to take a trial and error approach and uh, change the spacing of my spacers. Um, I had oblong and I'm going to show you these uh, two images from uh, last night. I was chasing some oblong stars across the field of view, all going in the same direction. Um, and again, uh, what I started to do is reduce uh, the distance here um, by putting a smaller uh, spacer in. I actually went further, increased the backspacing, 
and then I am uh, work the other direction to reduce it. Now, there's many ways that we can try and tackle problems, in particular when we're a beginner. I'm a second year beginner, and one thing I like about this hobby is you can use trial and error. You know, you can try something, see what the result is, document it, change one variable, see what the result is. So I am basically using a trial and error. Now, when I change my back focus, then my stars are uh, were out of focus, and in particular, uh, the guide stars that I was seeing through my guide camera here uh, were really bad. So I was doing a series of iterative steps to change the distance here through the spacer, then go in and do a manual focus and uh, try to get the star to a manually focused position and then I would, uh, using the uh, ASI Air Plus, and then I would run an autofocus routine and uh, see what I have. All the while then defocusing the stars once they were focused to see what the donut looked like. What is, you know, how, how was my collimation looking and um, what was happening in the edge of the image. So I've, I've got a lot more to go. Many say address your tilt first. I'm taking a little bit different approach and I'm trying to get my backspacing uh, set correctly. Um, the trouble is, in my mind, when you're trying to chase tilt, there may be other aberrations that are causing what it, it appears to be tilt. And again, you know, I'm a total novice in this area, so I'm basically doing trial and error. But um, I'm starting to get more rounded stars. I'm not seeing the pronounced uh, uh, bottom right to top left uh, elongation of my stars. So I think I'm working in the right direction and I'll continue to be iterative in that approach. Tonight it's going to be cloudy uh, until about uh, 1 o'clock in the morning. So uh, I'm going to get a, night, a good night of sleep tonight and then tomorrow uh, I'll be back out here. So why don't we go inside and I'll show you the before and then I'll show you the after and uh, I know many of you that are on the channel have a similar configuration either an Edge HD 8 or uh, 925 or 11. Um, feel free to give me some input and uh, what worked for you. Again, uh, I do read the information that is available on the web but in my mind at the end of the day I've got to spend some time in the backyard and do some trial and error uh, to understand how I can improve the uh, situation. I'm not there yet, but I think I'm moving in the right direction. And then at some point, I'll have to uh, understand how much tilt I have in my system. And again, it's not necessarily the tilt of the sensor. It could be any of these machine parts that may not be precision machined or a little bit off that could also introduce uh, tilt into the situation. And so while I was using the ASI Air Plus last night uh, for the work I was doing, I'm going to switch over. Uh, tomorrow night looks good and I'll bring Nina back up. I do want to use the um, Hocus Focus and it has uh, aberration detection and I understand it can help with tilt. Again, in the link that I'm gonna put in the video description, uh, I don't know, like six or seven pages in, I think the person who wrote Hocus Focus uh, chimes in and uh, kind of gives a simple outline of how to get it set up in uh, Nina. So I'm going to try that. And again, while you see the ASI error, uh, I'm still going to be uh, using Nina uh, when I need to. And I think in this situation, I need to use Nina to use the Hocus Focus plugin and start to look at aberration and tilt. Now, uh, I think uh, ASTAP, is it ASTAP? I think is also a tool that can be used uh, and help you understand what tilt you may have uh, in, in your image train, wherever it may lay. So, all right, let's uh, just go inside, take a quick look at two images, and then we'll just kind of close this video out. 
Okay, so just going to briefly look at a couple of images. And one other thing I uh, wanted to mention in that iterative process that I was using out there, every time I changed my, uh, my back focus distance and then I had to manually uh, focus and then autofocus and then I had to refocus my uh, guide scope as well. But with a little patience, uh, I was able to make some improvements. So, uh, as I said, I'm not all the way there, but let's just quickly take a look at a couple of images. Uh, the first one here is, and unfortunately, the way my backyard is set up, I don't have this, the objects available to me for long. So I'm actually using two different objects here uh, to do the comparison. Um, ideally, I'd like to be out on the dark side, have full view of the sky, and, uh, but I don't right now. And uh, I chose not to go down to the dark side uh, in Landers, California over the Thanksgiving uh, holiday to be uh, home here uh, with my wife and family. So, all right, so this first one here, uh, let's see if we can take a look. You can kind of see these stars as I kind of zoom in are elongated. And typically they were moving... Uh, from the bottom right up to the left or from the upper left down to the right across the field of view. Uh, this is uh, M33 here. So pretty elongated. This is when uh, I had, I think, too much backspacing and then I reduced the size of the spacer to bring it closer into around 105. And then, so let's take a look at this second image, uh, which should be this one here. Um, all right, and why are you not, uh, it is not active for me. So what is going on? Oh, there we go. Okay, so let's kind of move in a little bit. So I got a little bit more around this, but, you know, uh, I'm looking over on the side display, but there's some, um, still some elongation. Um, so I have some more to do, and if we go down into the corners, yeah, we have a elongation there. Towards the center of the field, to me, they look a little rounder. Uh, but again, well, maybe there's some elongation there. So I knew when I opened the can of worms, it was not going uh, to be as uh, easy as one, two, three. I knew I'd have to put some effort into it. That's what I'm doing. So I would like to get things ready for the uh, December new moon with this uh, scope. And um, I'm sure if I stick with it, uh, I'll get it there. Again, I have uh, been dealing with uh, weather that's not favorable and a very restricted uh, view of the sky for my backyard. But with patience, I'll, I'll be able to uh, bring it in. And then once I get Nina up and running and I can use Hocus Focus and the, I think, aberration detector, uh, I'll be able to acquire some additional information that I'm sure will be helpful. Uh, I did get notification that my second ASI Air Plus has shipped, so shortly I'll, I think I'm, it's going to be received tomorrow night, so I'll have uh, two ASI Air Pluses. And again, the strategy with my Edge HD8 is going to be uh, at times to use the ASI Air Plus, uh, other times uh, employ Nina. Uh, in particular to take advantage of the uh, plugins that are available and uh, that's how I'm going to go forward here in the short term. All right, uh, again if you like this kind of content uh, please give it a thumbs up as always like, share, and subscribe. I just want to keep you updated on uh, what I'm doing on my learning journey independent of the Astro Chats. Keep an eye out for the Astro Chats if you'd like to be on one. Uh, reach out to me. I'll put an email address that you can use and we'll uh, work to get you scheduled to come on and chat. And Again, the whole goal is to help other uh, imagers that are in the beginning part of their journey uh, get up that learning curve a little bit more quickly. I'm very thankful that uh, you, the viewers and uh, subscribers, have really helped me uh, get up my learning curve. I appreciate that. and Now I want to try and do what I can to help others uh, and if I can bring more experienced people in to share knowledge of what they wish they knew when they were beginning and those kind of things, it, it just might help others. All right. Uh, 
wherever you may be in the world, I hope you uh, have some clear skies. Other than that, till next time.